Morning all. Well, it's morning here. Anyways, uh, so news of the day video for all you fine people on the internet for your Good Friday, which is March the 29th. There's just the one game tonight. There are 15 tomorrow, and then there's one on Sunday. So uh, it is it is quiet, and the game on Sunday I'm going to. So anyways, uh, we're going to start off talking about Caden Gooling. He, Caden Gooley. Gooling. Gooley. He has a hearing for a slash on Travis Konechny in the game against the Flyers last night. A hearing does mean a suspension. We'll see if it's a game, two games, however many games it is, but it is a suspension, which of course leads to all of the, well, when is this guy getting suspended? Um, Nick Suzuki also cracked the 30 goal mark last night. That's the first time he's hit 30 goals. Despite all of the, the naysayers about his contract, I have never said any, had anything bad to say about Nick Suzuki's contract. He has gradually built up his points totals every year. And yeah, I think the guy's legit. But anyways, there you go. Uh, Simon Benoit has signed an extension with the Toronto Maple Leafs. It's a three-year extension, a $1.35 million cap hit. Benoit's done a very good job this year of showing what he can do at the NHL level. I thought he had a brutal season last year in Anaheim, and uh, it's nice to see him turn it around in Toronto and now have some job security, some financial security. Good on him. And uh, Benoit gives them a nice third-pairing option. Uh, the depth on the blue line is always important. Toronto, of course, knowing this. And, uh, yeah, so Benoit's going to be sticking around with the Leafs. Uh, Philadelphia Flyers, they unveiled their new goaltender today. Here's Fedotov. And when Danny Briere was asked about the process of bringing him over, the answer was, I'm not getting into that kind of thing. Like, he, like Briere's not giving us details, so we're, we're back. Uh, back in the Aaron Curtin days, that's kind of how it would work. You'd have, okay, this player's here now. Ta-da! And then you would find out later, years later or months later, just all of the 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 stuff they had to go through to bring that player over. So uh, Fedotov got signed by the Philadelphia Flyers in 2022. He was drafted by them nine years ago. Uh, and he's coming off of a, a decent year in the KHL. He actually had one more year left on his KHL contract. They, ext they, they terminated that contract, uh, which has allowed him to come over and play for Philadelphia, where he already had a contract. So... Uh, his contract was told, meaning that because he didn't come over and play, the contract just shifts from one year to the next. Uh, so he's already signed. They don't have to sign him. Uh, Fedotov is not fluent in English. few words uh, in English spoken by him, but he did say he's very glad to be over. He's glad he's going to get a chance to play for the Flyers. And so we'll see. Now, again, they've used up their emergency recalls after the deadline, and I don't know how this would fit in. It's a player coming over to North America they already had signed. So you don't have to worry about waivers or any of that. If they'd signed him, they'd have to worry about waivers. But I, I, I don't know exactly how this is going to work. I think the Flyers would love to have him in the lineup right now. I think if they could go with Erson and Fedotov, I think they would give it a shot. I, I just don't know whether or not uh, the NHL, the NHLPA, what, what their opinion is going to be on that. But I'm glad Fedotov's over. Uh, this is a story that's been going on for years. And uh, yeah, so uh, it should be fascinating to hear this whole story. I'm um, calling it now. Eventually, there'll be a movie about this kid. But anyways, uh, yeah, so we'll see how he does with the Flyers and, and what the plan is from here. The Flyers, of course, getting um, beaten by the Montreal Canadiens last night. They've got to get things going. They do have teams behind them that they have to worry about. The Islanders could heat up again. Uh, Detroit is right there. And of course, Washington can pass them. Washington's only one point back. So the Flyers, endless newsworthy stories throughout the season. I'd like to thank the Flyers for giving me a lot to talk about this season. Uh, Coach Mike Sullivan saying that Ryan Graves has been diagnosed with a concussion. So that's going to test the depth on the blue line. Of course, Pittsburgh won last night. Uh, they are still in the playoff hunt. Technically, mathematically, they're still alive. So we can't count them out. Uh, but for the Pittsburgh Penguins, uh, their depth on the blue line gets tested, which is, again, standard during any given season. And it feels like the Penguins are a team that deals with injuries more than others most seasons. Uh, it doesn't feel like that's been the case this year, but yeah. Um, so they're going to be missing Graves for a while. Uh, the Winnipeg Jets. So we've talked about their attendance, and of course a lot of it's been negative headlines. The, the good news is there's some positivity out there with the Jets right now. Back-to-back uh, -back sellouts for the Winnipeg Jets as we're approaching the playoffs. The sad news is uh, the, the Jets, of course, losing last night. The Jets seem to be sliding at the absolute worst time of year. 
Um, they're they're going to end up with more points than last season. They're definitely a playoff team, but what are they going to do in said playoffs? Who knows? The one thing, of course, is when you get into the playoffs, the the playoff gate revenues are nothing to sneeze at. They're you know a few million dollars per per game, um, and and so yeah, for the Winnipeg Jets, that might be the difference between making a profit and not. <clears throat> Again, not knowing their numbers, but knowing the attendance being down and just how much of NHL revenue is tied up in gate, so ticket revenues. Uh, if you're not selling tickets, you may very well not be turning turning a profit. So. Uh, all the best to the Jets, and hopefully they get back on track before the playoffs roll around, or maybe just as the playoffs uh, get started on April 20th. So the playoffs, so far we have five teams that have clinched a playoff spot. Uh, the New York Rangers, of course, were the first to clinch. Boston clinched last night without playing. They didn't have to play. They backed into the playoffs. Best way to get in. Uh, so the Bruins are in. The Florida Panthers clinched, even though they lost against the Islanders. Carolina clinched. They did beat De beat Detroit in order to allow other teams to clinch. And, of course, Dallas, with the victory over Vancouver last night, became the first team in the West to clinch a playoff spot. Colorado's close. Winnipeg, Vancouver, they're close as well. Uh, and so tomorrow, with the 15 games on and with everything that could happen there, we may very well see some, some more teams clinching playoff spots and then we get into the further discussions on who's going to face who, which uh, honestly I think is going to be uh, decided in the last week of the season. I don't think we're going to know all the matchups uh, until the last couple of nights of the season. So Ryan Strom got fined, so I'm putting all this together. Uh, NHL Department of Player Safety came out and announced a fine uh, for a cross-check on Cartier. Uh, and immediately people came in with, well, why isn't that a suspension? Shouldn't that be a suspension? It's a cross-check to the face. Uh, the answer I would give to that is there's a wheel. They spin the wheel and there's a fine or there's a suspension. It's really up to them. Uh, and, and so, yeah, Strom gets fined. And again, coming out of a 14-game night, I'm not surprised that the NHL Department of Player Safety has a couple of announcements. Of course, Gula getting the hearing and uh, Strom getting the fine. I'm honestly kind of surprised there's not more, considering all the hits that were thrown last night and the fact that we're starting to get into some, some playoff intensity in these games. Like that Rangers-Avalanche game last night, that was an intense game, although the hits weren't very high in that one. So anyways, uh, yeah, so there's there's your, your fine, your suspension, and again, we're about three weeks out from the start of the playoffs. So one game tonight in the National Hockey League, it is the New Jersey Devils, it is the Buffalo Sabres. They are both sitting below the playoff line. New Jersey closer to said playoff line. Their hopes haven't been crushed yet. Buffalo's kind of sort of have. Uh, the New Jersey Devils 36-33-4 on the season. Uh, Buffalo 34-34-5. Both of these teams are 5-5 five and five in their last 10. On October 27th, New Jersey won 5-4. November 25th, it was a 7-2 no mercy victory for the Devils. So the Devils have won twice. Can Buffalo avoid the season sweep? We shall see. Uh, for the New Jersey Devils, Timo Meyer's been excellent lately. Overall, he has 24 goals, 21 assists for 45 points. Luke Hughes racking up the points as a rookie. Nine goals, 31 assists, 40 points. I, I don't hear a lot of talk about Calder with him. It seems like Faber and, and Bedard are your two uh, most likely favorites. I would not be surprised to see Luke Hughes. Though. I'll say top four in voting. Maybe he doesn't end up in the top three, but ends up in the top four. On the Buffalo side... Uh, Paterka, 25 goals, 20 assists, 45 points. He's been dangerous lately. Uh, may very well get himself a goal tonight. And Owen Power, 6 goals, 22 assists, 28 points. has been very good. Uh, with Byram, Power, Darlene, they have one of the stronger young cores on the blue line in the National Hockey League, and it's kind of impressive. So at any rate, let me know who you think wins this game in the comment section below. As always, let me know your thoughts on any of the news items on the board as well while you're at it. Thank you guys so much for all your support as always. If you haven't already hit like and subscribe, please do. I'll talk to you again soon.